Diabetes, sugar, you may have heard about it. Well, me and my dad were having a conversation recently. He's 77 and he's like, you know what, my diabetes is under control. And I'm like, dad, your diabetes is not under control. You're taking 14 or 15 tablets and you're not walking, you're not looking at your diet. India is the diabetic capital of the world. 77 million in 2019. We're slated to go up to 134 million by 2045 as per data in the internet. Now, what shocked me was 57% of these individuals remain undiagnosed, which means diabetics is a silent killer. Now, I want you to understand that when my father made this statement, my diabetes is under control, he is using medication to control his diabetes. His diabetes is not under control. Medicine is trying to control it. But what if I could tell you that there is a way for diabetes to be effectively managed? In fact, for you to not get diabetes, you have to learn to effectively manage your energy levels, which comes from your input, which is diet, and your output, which is your exercise. Both of which we are culprits in this country of not doing it correctly like our grandparents did. They ate correctly, they walked and exercised correctly, something that you and I are not being exposed to. So here's my video on diabetes and how we can effectively get us to understand what could I do to prevent diabetes or if I do have diabetes, what are the small things that I can do to arrest the progression of this disease. So yesterday in my counseling room, I was explaining to a 30 year old kid how diabetes forms in the human body. Now you first need to understand sugar and its management. You see, when you eat food, the food is broken down. Now this food contains carbohydrates, which is the sugar. This sugar breaks down and this sugar breaks down into fructose, or glucose. Now this goes into the bloodstream and now when it goes into the bloodstream, the bloodstream says, oh wow, salam sab, all sugars come. You have to go into all the cells, you have to go to the brain, you have to give energy and everything. But you cannot have a high sugar level. So there is a police cop for this high sugar level. Now who's this police cop? This police cop is a guy called insulin. Insulin is a hormone. It's like, you know, there's too much crowd on the roads outside your house. Then you call up the police station, pancreas. Hello, Mr. Pancreas, can you send one hoisala vehicle, one police vehicle? The police vehicle will come with cops. The insulin guy comes out and tells all the sugar mo molecules, don't party in the street. What is partying in the street? High blood sugar level. So by doing lati, insulin pushes all the sugar into the cell. Now, over years of having a lot of parties in the streets, high blood sugar level, Insulin gets a call at the police station. Hello, outside Mr. Ryan Fernando's house, there's a party happening. Are yaar, every day and every year, high sugar level, high parties happening. Yaar. We are going to send eight police vehicles. We send eight police vehicles. Are by the sugar party doesn't disappear. Then next month, we sell 10 police vehicles. This is the concept of type 2 diabetes, where over a period of time, your police insulin guy cannot respond well or its insulin resistance has increased. Now you have another type of diabetes, which is type 1 diabetes, which is more on an autoimmune side where your police station gets affected. When your police station gets affected, that's the pancreas, the production of insulin is lowered or lesser and therefore you have to recruit a private security force. The private security force is injections of insulin. So you now you've understood, you take carbohydrate that forms into sugar and then you need police to control it. Now every day if you're having a party in your bloodstream by eating the wrong foods, every day you have to send boat loads or truck loads of police to control that. After some time police will be say, Are yaar, chhod do yaar, nahi karne ka, nahi manage, crowd control nahi karne ka, to sugar control nahi ho ka. So this is diabetes for you and it starts with your inactivity, because when you do a lot of activity, you pull out all the party makers in your blood, you lower your blood sugar level by walking after every meal, and you also lower your blood sugar level by eating the right foods when you construct your protein, carbs, and fats in a right quantity at the right time of the right quality. So let me explain further to you. And then there is another form of diabetes which happens mostly to mothers. It's called gestational diabetes. Now this diabetes develops during pregnancy when the body cannot produce enough of the insulin to meet the increased needs of both the mother and the growing baby. This condition normally happens in the second or the third trimester and generally solves itself after childbirth. However, you need to know this. Mothers, gestational diabetes can significantly increase the risk 
of mother's later developing type 2 diabetes later on in her life. And it does pose a health risk to both the baby and the mother and there's a likelihood of more obesity and type 2 diabetes both in the mother and child. Gestational diabetes affects pregnant women who have a higher risk factor such as being overweight, there's already a family history of diabetes or they belong to certain ethnic groups. So managing gestational diabetes involves again making dietary adjustments to control the blood sugar level such as eating balanced meals. Most mothers are told eat double the quantity, that's not true. You just need a carefully controlled diet with a medical nutritionist. So monitoring carbohydrate would be important in pregnancy and kind of making the food consumption spread out throughout the day to avoid high spikes in blood glucose levels. In some cases, the mothers may need insulin therapy to maintain optimal blood sugar levels. Now, my solution is regular physical activity and monitoring of the blood glucose levels, which will help better manage or prevent gestational diabetes. I would recommend a close collaboration with healthcare providers, including dietitians, endocrinologists that ensure both the mother and the baby remain healthy. So you know what I always tell people is, I ask them a list of questions to diagnose diabetes with just verbal questions. And those questions are including, do you have frequency of urination? Do you have excessive thirst? Do you feel extremely hungry? Suddenly you've gained weight or suddenly you've lost weight, lots of fatigue, irritability. I've seen people who get irritated very easily can have uh, diabetes. Blurred vision, uh, you get cuts and sores in the older age and they don't heal. Lots of frequent cough, colds, infections. This could be because of a higher sugar. Another one which is not mentioned, I would like to say that when you pee in a toilet and you find ants the next day in around that bowl, then you have sugar in your urine. That's another way to check whether you got diabetes. And so now that you got these questions, ask yourself these questions. Let's talk about what could be the causes. The causes could be definitely weight. I look at fat people and I'm like, dude, you're a walking, ticking time bomb for diabetes. So overweight and obesity, number one. Physical inactivity, insulin resistance, genetic predisposition, mommy, daddy had it. Poor diet is like everybody right now in the corporate world with high processed sugars and unhealthy fats. Eating out, if I look at your e-commerce apps for ordering food, I can tell you with the risk element how quickly you're going to get diabetic. So do you think you have diabetes? Do you think you're a candidate that you could become diabetic because of the way you eat? So now I have a solution and that's called nutrition therapy. Nutrition therapy is a crucial component of diabetic management. Now, like my dad said, you know, my diabetes is under control. He has no nutrition therapy. Now what I want to do is I need you to understand it involves a personalized diet plan designed not only to manage your glucose levels, but also your body weight and balance if you have high cholesterol and BP and other issues, reduce those risk factors using your diet. Thus, you eliminate any issues that are coming from the cardiovascular point of view also. So some of the key strategies that I use with my clients, which have not been successful with my dad is carbohydrate management. Dad, eat less bread. I want him to monitor his carbohydrate intake. I want him to choose high fiber, low glycemic index foods, which include whole grains, legumes, dals, non-starchy vegetables and fruits. Yes, you heard me correctly. Diabetics can eat fruits, but you, know to, you need to know which fruit is allowed for a diabetic based on its glycemic index. Another strategy is to include proper balanced meals. I believe the human race does not understand the concept of balanced meals. It involves incorporating a variety of foods in balanced proportions to manage blood sugar levels. And this includes lean protein, healthy fats, high fiber carbohydrates, in actual ratio of 5 is to 3 is to 2. That's 50% carbohydrates, 30% protein and 20% fat. Now the problem over here is very few people understand diet planning and I have been able to get phenomenal results with the continuous glucose monitoring device because you make an error and you can see a sugar spike. So you eat the wrong food, you see a sugar spike. So I think Balanced diet, when I verbally tell it to people, hey, you need to follow balanced diet, people nod their head and say, yes, yes, we know what is balanced diet. They know what is balanced diet, but they don't know how to serve themselves a balanced diet. And by putting a CGM device on, you begin to correct a person saying that, dude, look at this, you got a sugar spike. So then you're like, oh, what did I eat half an hour earlier? Oh, I ate this much amount of rice. Maybe tomorrow I'll eat a little bit lesser rice. So that comes to my next point eating lesser. 
portion control in diabetic management, we need to be mindful of portion sizes to avoid overeating and weight gain. I just had a sports athlete in my clinic and her fat percentage has gone up by about 900 grams. She said, but I ate so disciplined. And I said, you know what? This was the season of mango. And she went, oh yeah, I really ate a lot of mangoes. Look, portion control is one part. The other part is we forget what we ate yesterday. I can't remember what I ate for breakfast yesterday. Do you? So when we don't remember our meals, when we don't have a food diary, when we don't have a CGM, we are eating to fulfill our belly needs, not our biochemistry requirement. So if you were a finely tuned vehicle and you had to put fuel into your body, I would say the amount of carbohydrate you put into your body is such that you never run out of fuel but you never put so much of fuel into you that your petrol tanks, which is your fat mass, keeps increasing. Now, how can we do this? I have a solution. One is the CGM, but the other is regular meals and snacks. We do something known as the isocaloric approach where we eat at regular intervals to maintain consistent blood sugar levels. So that's one strategy. I have another strategy called the OMAD, one meal a day. Now, this can only be done with medical nutrition therapy. That is, you go to a medical dietitian and she monitors your CGM as well as what she would be doing is testing out your heart levels as well as checking your weight and body fat percentage three to six month period to see if either many meals or one meal a day is what's going to work for you. And in that constructor meal, the protein carb fat ratio also is carefully monitored. And in that, the timing of nutrition is also monitored and in that the sequence by which you eat in a meal that is first I eat my salad then I have my soup and then I have my protein and then last I have my carbohydrate and this leads to the lowest possible sugar spike in your blood levels. So here are some quick tips to help you manage your diabetes.